Hello and welcome to this second Friday video. This one will be on chapter two. So we'll go ahead and click on, get going, and look at some of the problems. The two problems I'm going to look at are going to be number seven and number eight. Number seven looks at distributions and the shape of the distributions. And number eight looks at percentages and percentage tables, frequency tables and the meaning of the row percents versus the column percents. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? And so let's get started with problem number seven. This is uh, problem 39 from the book. So figure 221 gives stimuli displays of two variables. So let's look at figure 221. Uh, if you're looking at your book, this is going to be figure 2.21. If you turn this your book sideways, you can get a better feel for these distributions. Notice that payment times looks like it has a tail in the positive direction, which is the right side. And the ratings seem to have a tail to the bottom, to the, to the negative side, or to the left side. Um, so this is the tail for ratings, and this will be the tail for payment times. Let's take a look. Payment times distribution. It's got a tail to the right. That's my first answer. The bottle is in rating distribution. That's our second one. It's going to be skewed to the left. Neither of these is symmetric. It would be symmetric if you had a tail in both directions. But here we just got this one long tail for the payment times and one long tail for the ratings. And that's problem number seven. And our second problem is problem number eight. This is 47 from the book. It's marketing department at the Rolla Cola Bottling Company. And we've got this big table of observed frequencies and then percents. And notice that percent of row, percent of column, and percent of total. And the percent of total is going to equal whatever is in this cell divided by the total sample size. And the percent of column is going to equal whatever is in this cell divided by the total for the, this column, or the total of the nose. And the percent of the rows is just going to be this value, the observed for no, colca, uh, divided by the sum of the row values. And the sum is right here, the total. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, there we go. We got the Excel data file. Got some results here. Let's see what the table looks like. Uh, that's raw data. Not a fan of raw data. So let's open up our Excel data file and see what that gives to us. That's kind of the raw data too. Make this nice and big so I can see it without my glasses. So there's the shopper number, that's the ID, the cola preference, so it's either Coca or Rolla. Asked if the previously purchased, and those are the only two columns that we're going to be using here. Because Coca and purchased. So what number goes in this? That's for all the people who drank Coca or selected Coca and did not purchase it. So we'll hop over to the COLA survey. Uh, we got a count where it's COCA, and previously purchased is no. Hmm. There's got to be an easy way of doing this. Or I should say there's got to be an easier way of doing this. And here it is. I'm going to highlight all of the data in Excel, including that, yeah, we don't need that top row. Now I'm going to sort and filter. I'm going to do a custom sort. Now I'm going to first sort by the B column. Data does not have headers, so I'll unclick that. I'll sort by the B column, and then I'll sort by the C column. Add level, then by column C. Now all the cocas are together and all the coca no's are together, and the coca yeses are together. And then the rollas are all together with the no's and the yeses separated. That makes things a little bit nicer. So let's look. The first cell 
is coca and no. So how many coca knows? Well, according to this, there we go. According to this, there's 14. How many coca yeses? Two. Now rolla no. Those are the rolla nos. There's seven of those. And rolla yeses. There's 17. Now that's summary data. So now we can fill in the total. How many total cocas were there? There were 14 and 2, which is 16. How many total rollas? 7 and 17 is 24. How many total no's? 21. How many total yeses? 19. How many total totals? Well, we can either do 21 and 19 or 16 plus 24. So I did my arithmetic correctly, that's 40. So let's fill in this percent of row. So this n value, this percentage, will be 14. What you observe here, divided by the row total. 14 divided by 16. What is 14 divided by 16? I don't know, at least not off the top of my head. So I'm going to do equals 14 divided by 16, 875, 87.5. Omit the percent, one decimal place, okay. And yes is 2 out of 16, which is 12.5%. And what's 87.5 plus 12.5? That had better be 100%. Let's do the row percent for the roller now. It's going to be 7, what you observe for this cell, divided by 24. 7 divided by 24 is some number that I'm going to have Excel calculate for me. 7 divided by 24, 292. And then what's left over is 100% minus 29.2, which is 70.8. Or you could have Excel do that for you. 70.8, and then those two add up to 100. And we can do the same for the total row. 21 divided by 40 52.5. This will be 47.5, or 19 over 40. And those two add up to 100%. Okay, so we took care of all the observed, that is, we summarized the data. Now we calculate all the row percents. And again, row percent is the observed divided by the row total. And now we do the column percents, which are, is the observed divided by the column total. So the observed for COCA and NO is 14. The column total is 21. So this will be 14 over 21. Remember, we round it to one decimal place. And again, percent of column, this will be 7 divided by 21. And then 21 divided by 21, that it better be 100%. 10.5. This will be 17 divided by 19, 89.5. And this will be 19 divided by 19. And now for the last column, it will be 16 divided by 40. This will be 24 divided by 40. and 40 divided by 40. 
So the row percents are the observed uh, divided by the row total. The column percents are the observed divided by the column total. And the percent of total is what you observe divided by the total number of people you ask. So all of the percent of total will have 40 as the denominator. So this one will be 14 over 40. This will be 2 out of 40. Sixteen out of forty. Seven out of forty. Seventeen divided by forty. Twenty four divided by forty. Twenty one divided by forty. Nineteen divided by forty. Forty divided by forty. So that's the frequency table. Again, it's the observed for the percent for the row percents is the observed divided by the row total. For the column percents, it's the observed divided by the column total. And for percent of total, it's the observed divided by the total total, the sample size. So what do these numbers actually or what do these percents actually mean? For the row total, it means given your coca, you preferred coca, or cola, 87.5% did not purchase it before. Percent of row. So given you're in this row, so given that you preferred coca cola, 87.5 had not purchased it before. 12.5 had. For this one, given that you preferred Rola Cola, 29.2 had not purchased it before, 70.8 70 had. So given you're in this row, again, row, given you're in this row. Now, the column, given you're in this first column, given that you had not purchased the cola before, 66.7 preferred coca. One third preferred rolla. Given that you had purchased it before, 10.5 preferred coca, 89.5% preferred. So the row percent are. And for percent of total, 35% of everyone we asked preferred coca but had not purchased it before. Now, so when we're doing it in terms of total, it's the row and the column. So this 42.5, 42.5% of the people we talked to preferred Rolla and had purchased it before. So that's how you interpret these. And that interpretation is pretty important for the rest of this problem. And with that, let's finish the problem. How many shoppers who preferred Rola Cola, so were given they preferred Rola Cola, had previously purchased it? So how many shoppers were given they're in the Rola Cola row? We're given Rola, so we're in this row. How many had purchased it before? 17. How many shoppers who preferred Coca-Cola 
had not previously purchased Rola Cola. So we're given that they purchased Coca Cola. So we're given we're in this row. How many were no? It's 14. If you have purchased Rolla previously, that is given that you have purchased cola, a uh, Rolla cola, in other words, given yes, you've purchased it, so we're now in this column, you are more likely to prefer Rolla. So let's look in this. We're in this column, so we're paying attention to the column percents. 10.5, 89.5. So given that you purchased Rola Cola previously, you are definitely more likely to prefer Rola Cola. Because 89.5% of them did. So that's true. Now the key, and we're going to see this again when we start talking about probability more in I think the second or third part of the course, we're going the we're actually talking about different types of probabilities here. These are conditional probability. We're given we're in this row for A. We're given we're in this row for B. We're given that we're in this column for C. Which means that since this is the information we're given, we ignore everything else. So keep this problem in mind as we move forward in the course. Because when we get to that conditional probability in, I believe, chapter 4, you'll want to think back to this problem and, oh, now it's starting to make a little bit more sense. But until chapter four, we've still got chapter two to finish and chapter three. So hopefully this little video helped you with at least two of the problems in the chapter two assignment. So take care of yourselves. Bye.